testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. So I am, uh -oh, what happened? I'm ultrasonic cleaning a stubborn part and I moved my ultrasonic cleaner over and it suddenly stopped. So today's episode, oh, we, do we need to do our little, let's just do our test while I talk here. So I can't see. It's not even five in the morning. Parker do hold. That works. Uh oh. That works. Fine. Parker 51. 51. Parker 21. Okay, a failure. We have a failure. F A I L U R E. Why did this one fail? Is it out of ink? No, it has all sorts of ink in it. Why did it fail? Do I care why a 21 failed? I don't think so. So I'm going to take this out of the running right now and put the 51 in its the folder that it was in. No, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take that one out, put that one in there. 51, you see? Okay. This one failed. Good riddance. Okay. Failure. Ever sharp green. Ever sharp black. Uh oh. What's going on here? Is that a failure? This is not supposed to fail. No, it has ink in it, as you can see. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. There's a gap in the. in the what? In the thingy. This is a wall. M, number two. I'm gonna, I'm gonna reset this with a different nib. It's a job to do today. Um, but I, have to, I don't want to call that a failure. It's, it doesn't, it's, I'm just gonna say it worked. It's the, I put a sack in the pen and I think I put the same nib that it did in it. I have a problem, but evidently it did. Okay, Schaefer Brown, Hortz, Schaefer Green, Oval, Schaefer Black. This is the pen. This used to have a big slab of glass on it, which is now in two pieces. And this cut right here, that was what happened to me. Try it now. I'm glad this was the one that didn't break. Because I, I kind of like this base. It broke when I was moving moving things up to a shelf up there. See? They're all up there and here. So I'm able to. What is my supervisor going to say about my notes? Ah. It's nice being your own boss. Okay, so today, <clears throat> when I should be doing something, I ran across a pen that made me smile and made me sad and then made me smile again. And then made me think, I'll make you guys sad, uh, but maybe you'll smile at the end of it. Um, I have many pens that have traumas to them that, unlike uh, tooth marker two or a 
ding or two or a scratch or two or an unpleasant name engraved uh, on the side or um, a nib that maybe is a little bent but writes fine. Those are cosmetic problems and it's like with people that have those kinds of problems. You see someone with maybe one eye and he's wearing an eye patch and it's fashionable when he can sell arrow shirts or <clears throat> um, what else do we have eye patches? Corona beer, does he have an eye patch? Sometimes eye patches can look okay. It, um, it works. It's a fashionable thing. Sometimes a fencing scar can look okay. Sometimes a missing tooth has a charm to it. And then there's other, even a, <clears throat> even a peg leg, uh, you know, if it's nicely turned out, can, can look good. And maybe in some cases better than what two legs would look like. Oh, no. I feel I'm getting into shaking around here. Because um, I'm implying people that have some sort of physical uh, issue are not beautiful. And of course they are beautiful. But there are times when um, certain injuries sort of cross that barrier. And I'm thinking of the poor survivors of World War I that had half their face blown off or eaten away or both by um, shrapnel and all that kind of stuff and and it's quite disturbing when you see someone that is whose face is so altered um, and there are certain problems with pens that make me think of those that sort of person um, so this pen, there's nothing wrong with it. Yes, I know it's a stately or taper right, whatever it's called. And uh, what's wrong with it, you say? Well, if you look at it over here, can I get a light on here so you can actually see what I'm trying to show you? It has a big old hole in it. Now why that hole showed up there, I don't know. It looks like it's not supposed to be there. There are some pens that have holes cut in so you can show the buyer how the ink sack works and the lever works and stuff. But this has become sort of a, a uh, demonstrator pen by accident. And this is kind of like the, in Minnesota, they used to have a cow that had a glass window in the side of its body that they put in to show how the stomachs worked and um, evidently that was something that people wanted to see and pay their one thin dime for. So this is kind of a demonstrator pen. So no one's going to want to buy this of course but it, it has use and value to me because it does show that and I don't have to explain in words and pictures how a pressure bar works. So this is in my collection. I do have other pens that are in my collection too that have shown repairs done by an earlier owner. And this is one of those. It's a Boston... No, what is this? Snap fill pen. Curry Pen Company? Is that what it says? It's, it's a, you turn this to the side somehow. Come on, get to the side. And you press the pressure bar down. I have 
have a bunch, I have many of these, and I don't know why it's not doing that. But what I like about this pen isn't so much that. Oh, it is turning a little bit. It's, it's supposed to turn faster than this. It doesn't have a sack. But see, there it's... Anyway, don't worry about it. At some point, it developed a crack right there. And some guy, or girl, some dame, some guy, who owned this pen decided they'd get some very thin wire and wrap it around making a cap band that would hold that crack closer together so it could be posted and actually work. And I just love the workmanship that went into that. I think, I think it's really cool. Would I prefer the pen without that? In this case, no. I like this pen better because it showed the original owner cared about this pen enough so that he or she took the time to repair it. They could have brought it into a pen repair store and the pen repair store might have sold them a new cap or said it can't be fixed or whatever. But I really like this homemade job. You also see that here. Now, I think this has been thread. I don't think it's wire, though it might be. But I think it's thread. And then I think, unless this is just dirt and grime, which is impossible to imagine, how could it, there be anything dirty or grimy in my house? But I think they might have painted this over with black paint or some sort of sealant. There's a lot of what looks to be applied crud to this. Could be epoxy. I, I really don't know. But that made the clip stay. The clip had fallen off, presumably. So that's another one that I like. Uh, another clip cap, Waterman clip cap, beautiful little one piece of wire going around, twisted with the pliers, making it tight. Of course, the person that owned this pen probably had little tiny tears on the inside of his pocket. And here's his pocket. Okay, ink. Do I have ink anywhere on my table? Or dirty water, that's close enough. Here's his pocket. And there's this little, all these, this little frayed threading here going down to about there as he's putting it into his pocket. That little wire tears at his shirt. It's not too sharp though, so I think they did a good job of making sure the sharp edge wasn't there. There's a little crack right here. I don't know if that was put on by me or someone else. The original owner, maybe. I don't know. But these all show... I don't want to use the word love. Love is something we use for romance and Romeo and Juliet and Castor and Pollux and... I don't know. Castor and Pollux, were they lovers? Donald and Melania. We use that for real, true love. But they liked their pen so much that they, rather than throwing it out or buying a new one, they fixed it with a peg leg or an eye patch. There's something that's really charming, I think, about these things. Zoom in so you see the charm. You see the charm? Look at my fingernails. Don't look at my fingernails. Are they charming? No. Some things just do not become charming. 
I'm not quite sure why this person did this. This could have been done, I'm trying to see in the light here whether there's any disturbing initials or something on this pen. I think this was just done in order to be beautiful. So they took a shitty, who made this pen? Imperial. Imperial pen. Does it even? No. Steel nibbed pen that was supposed, was born smooth. And they decided to b draw this pattern on it with a sharp knife. And I really think it's charming. It's like, you know, someone with a full body tattoo. It's really cool. Do, would I, do I like this better than it would be if it was brand new? Much, much better, because this is a crappy pen, but I like it much better anyway. It's really neat. But why this was done, you know, it, it actually feels nice in your hand. It doesn't slide around. My off camera here. So, God damn it, my <laughs> my jury rigged thing. I keep hitting the. I can move this out of the way here. I don't think I need to have that there. Free. Um, I don't think. Uh, I think this is an improvement. It's like you know scarification or. Tattoos. These are more like missing eyeballs or a missing leg. And a prosthetic was needed. And this is, I don't know what this is. Then there are sad cases. To me, an actual piece that's missing out of a cap lip is sad. And it's missing its clip, all sorts of issues are happening with this pen. But when I actually see a chip out of a cap lip, it, it's, it's more of a trauma to me than a crack. And it's, uh, it's bothersome to me. Now, why that bothers me and this doesn't, you'll have to have my brain, I'm going to get actual ink, this is, this is watered down ink, rather than inky water, um, but the, the pen, when it's missing a, so much of a cap lip, it really doesn't post very well. So that bothers me, and it also just, it bothers me. It bothers me in a way that this doesn't, these don't bother me. Maybe because it interferes with the function. What do you say? What do you think? Add your questions below. Worse than that, though, look at this beautiful pen. Nothing wrong with it. Looks, it'll look great in my case. It's almost mint in terms of its um, coloring. It's not yellowed at all. It didn't. This is one that turns yellow. So this is pretty sweet. But a big chip right out of that, out of, see, got even bigger, <laughs> a bigger chip right out of that thing. Um, and that makes it really not function. Now there might be someone that can fix this with a 3D printer and gum Arabic and magic 
powder. Um, but it's sad. To me, it's sad when this happens because it does interfere a lot with how the pen functions. Because the, um, anyway, it had a big chunk. This is just another little tiny bit. Uh, yes, I could file all of that down to make it flat. Oops. My, my. Let's see if I... Ouch! Fuck. Here's my the thing I'm trying to clean. Sometimes you leave it in the thing too, too long and it ends up melting the... Um, plastic. Um, so I could, you know, file it down and maybe it would be functional and it would be a slip cap. Or I could have threads cut. All of this requires effort on my part. So I just put it in a drawer as part of my Issues. Here's another one, a little waterman, beautiful little engraving, hand engraved, little, what did they call this one, poppy or pansy or something. Another chip right there. This one, I think though, someone went through the trouble of actually, you know, they, they, fixed it, but it looks like things had been added to it. I don't think that's more than just grime. It looks like it might be wax or something that was put in there, or maybe epoxy. So it might function. Maybe there's enough of... The threads are very, very worn. It does screw, though, a little bit. So that is another thing that makes me sad because it seems like I couldn't use it. I can use this pen wherever the other half is. A little golf pen has a little hole right there from who knows what. What's wrong with this one? Oh, that's what's wrong with it. That hole right there. And that, look, look, oh my God, does this match up? Let's see if this this is all part of the same trauma. I, I sound like an aircraft investigation person. I think it is. I think if this was pushed in more, or pulled out more, I think, look at that. So this, th some trauma happened, maybe it, there, see, it's tight. A little tiny asteroid made it all the way through the atmosphere, burning hot cinder went right through that. Isn't that interesting? Well, what do you know? This will go into my collection of trauma cases. So let's just... On the golf course, that's what happened. Someone on the golf, this is a golf pen. This was used to tally up the store, the, the score on the golf course. This little tiny pen would fit in your bloomers or your plus fours or whatever they're called. Funny baggy pants that are too short with your argyle socks. And Someone, uh, he, you know, he just was about, he got a par two, par one, par four, par whatever it is, on the third hole. <clears throat> and someone <clears throat> on the first hole shot his, had a slice or a wedge or a whatever that made the, his ball go really high on <clears throat> the first hole. And it went up into, I have to draw this out in, where's my, where's my pen? Where's a pen? Do I have a pen on my table here? So here's the golf course. 
Here's the guy that has that pen. He's right there, about to take his little draws. That I need to zoom in while I draw the setup here. So here he is. Here's his little flag for the third hole. He just took his pen out. <coughs> he was just about to uncap it, and a bird over here sang, or you know whatever, and he was just pondering the beauty of the of the, the course. And way over here, off the page, right here, is the, uh, the first hole, and the guy's putting. And now we have to zoom out. He he's not putting; he's driving. He's driving, and he sliced or whatever it is when you shoot up, and his golf ball went up. Here. Now we have to zoom out further. Here's the earth. The ball went way up to about there. You know, like one tenth the way to the moon. And then came back down. And <clears throat> it started burning as it entered the troposphere and stratosphere and whatever sphere. And it was coming down, and the last little tiny bit of ball. Let's line it up. Thank you. Landed. Burning. right there. <clears throat> and at that point, it was such a m tiny, tiny piece of, of uh, golf ball, burning golf ball, that the person that was just about to do this didn't even notice it happening. He did it, he did this, he put it there, did that, wrote his score, put it back, Put it back in his pocket and played the rest of the game without even noticing that he was hit by a meteorite. His pen was hit by a meteorite from this guy. Meanwhile, this guy still doesn't know where his ball went and he lost the terminant. Ter ter terminant. He lost the tournament and decided to become an accountant instead of a professional golfer. Similar to, no, not similar to any of these problems. The, all these problems were trauma provided by the world outside the um, factory. Some issues were caused by the ineptitude of the factory design, and this is one of them. This really saddens me when I see this. On the back of some pens, um, you see crazing and discoloration, and this is just gonna, one day I'm gonna open up this drawer and I'm gonna, that's gonna be missing. It's all gonna be just a little, little powder next to the back of this thing. And that's sad because it was flawed from the beginning. It was not carelessness on the part of me, the owner. It was made that way. Now, I have many pens that are screwed up in the back. Um, and some of them bother me more than others. This one bothers me more than others because it's kind of pretty. <laughs> and I have I have dozens of these kinds of pens that had clear red ends that are missing, and they don't bother me as much. But this one bothers me. Why I don't know. Write your response, your thoughts below. And why do I have this pen? This was in a drawer to have a sack put on it. it has a really sweet nib.
the nib is older than the pen, but it's, no, maybe not. It's really quite lovely. But when I, when I see pens that have trauma as a result of their manufacturer aiming, that's the bother. That's what bothers me. I'm trying to find another one here if I can get to it. Where is it? Here, I just had it. Or did I? There, this one. I thought, what's wrong with this pen? It has a really nice nib. It's a diamond metal. Good, a, a good second tier pen company or third tier. Nice nib. Is it a diamond? It's a warranted nib, I think. But right back here, you've got all of the little cracky patterns that are supposed to be there, supposed to be there, and then you have this one, and that one, and that one, and that one. It's like cracked ice, so this entire thing is going to break off at some point. Now it's lived for how many years since the 30s? 70? 100 years almost. 90 years without falling apart, and can it live that long Another 90 years before it goes away. I have a feeling because of the... What happened here, I can see this little bulging. The inside of this cap looks like this. Here's the outer cap. Here's the inner cap. Let's try to draw on the screen, shall we? Can we do that, do you think? The outer cap is, he is here. Oh, for God's sake. Outer cap is here. Inner cap is here. And between the inner and outer cap is this dog legged shaped, Z shaped clip. This, there's a big thing here is held in place here and the inner cap has a slightly filed down end side to it that will slide in here and hold it all in place. Well what happens here I think because this is expanded <clears throat> a bit is liquid ink got into the crack here made its way back there and started rusting the inside of this thing, the diamond metal clip, and expanded and started cracking the... That's a thought. That's a... I have not done actual tests. But it's really quite sad. Now what what is this like is it like the heartbreak of psoriasis on a human where it's it's just unsightly rather than just entirely disfiguring but at some point it's going to fall right off like leprosy or whatever that is that what leprosy did but it's otherwise a lovely nib. But traumas like this, because I know, unlike this one, wherever it went, this, these are things that are not going to get any better. They're only going to get worse. And by using the pen and putting it in your pocket is going to make it get worse fast, faster. Why am I showing you this pen? Oh, it needs a feed. That's not why I'm showing it to you. It was just here. This pen, this is what my repair. I fixed this myself. Um, it's a pen. I don't know if this is the original nib. I think I, I think I uh, 
swap the, this could be it though because it was a fine accountant nib which I really really like these days though I think I did take the nib out and put somewhere else bought this at a pen show and it was working and I wanted to draw with it I brought it out to me to the field to draw and I was uncapping it like this and not only the cap, but the nib and the section and the ring and half the barrel came off. And here I'm holding this thing, the lever and the back of the barrel. And I went over to the gift shop of the Harvard Natural History Museum. And I asked the nice lady behind the counter if she had any tape. And she did, and I taped it together so I could use it, and it worked fine. And it's working fine even to this day. I suddenly was reminded of a nice lady at a, at a second-hand bookstore in Boston. And this was many, 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 many years ago. Maybe 30 years ago? 35 years ago? And I bought some books. This is when I had money. I don't have any money now. I bought some books and brought it up to the counter. And I had my checkbook with me. And I was all set to write the check. And... I said, God damn it, I'm out of ink. I must have had only one pen with me that day, which is a very strange thing, too. Um, and there's a snorkel. Can we call a snorkel a flaw that happened at the factory? Anyway, I um, hate these pens. Um, I said, oh, I've run out of ink. Oh, I have ink here. And she brought out from the desk drawer, she knew exactly where it was. I imagine everyone, every, every um, employee in their training. <clears throat> Here's how you catalog the books. Here's how we price the books. We use pencil in the top right-hand corner of the last page. This is where we put it. We use this sort of numbering. And here's where we have a bottle of fountain pen ink in case any of our customers need a refill. And I thought, I want to go out and buy a dozen flowers and come back and propose to the, to the owner because they just won my heart. What are your thoughts? Let's say all of you wanted to, here's your, this is the first Happy New Year, by the way, everyone. This is the first year of 2021. Um, let's pretend <coughs> you wanted me to propose to you. Yeah, I don't know. No, you only want me for my fountain pens. I proposed to someone the other day, artist friend of mine, and he was he was making puppets, and one of the marionettes he made had what appeared to be, well, it had teeth in its mouth, and they looked kind of like real teeth, and he said. I said, are those real teeth? And then he showed me a drawer full, uh, not, not a drawer full, a tray full, a tray of fake teeth that uh, dentists use to select the size and color of the dentures they have to make for you. And I said, 
will you, will you marry me? <laughs> he said, you only want me for my teeth. And I, I had to say no, that wasn't the case. Yes, I would be happy to have the teeth, but, but. I, as you see, I have my own. This is a dentist salesman's kit or something to show how his clever bridge work can keep you chomping away at corn on the cob for the rest of your life. Um, but I, it wasn't the fact that he had teeth in a drawer. It's because he had teeth in a drawer. He was the kind of person that would have teeth. I didn't want the teeth. I wanted the guy that had the teeth. You see how that works? So let's pretend you and you and you and you and you wanted me to propose on bended knee. What do you think would do the trick? Or, if you don't want to answer that question, what, what would I have to have in order for you to say yes to a proposal? You already know I have lots of pens, but come up with another answer. This is a thought question. You're not under any obligation. I'm not going to sue for breach of contract. But maybe, just maybe, you'll say something that will make me smile. A friend of a neighbor of mine was on uh, a dating site. I don't know if it was Tinder or one of those things. Something Cupid, I think. And one of the stock questions, I guess, that people answer are, what can't you live without? And some guy said, I can't live without stomach parasites, or whatever they are. The, the little creatures that live inside of you that make you able to digest your food. And she, the woman who uh, was responding to his ad, that almost did it for her. Almost. This is a unfortunate nib. This is a real true-to-life nib. Someone actually made this nib. And... It's, it, this nib is going to write just like a... Oh, what a surprise. It actually is flexible. I would not have guessed that by looking at it. Never mind what I said. C. Addy Burdick. I thought it said Boldick, but my mind was in the gutter, as it often is. Missing its little top. I'm hungry. Um, so anyway, what else can I tell you? I could tell you all sorts of other things, but I've given you more than enough to do. And Happy New Year. Do you have any resolutions? When we have a revolution in the next civil war, I mean, when somehow the Republicans that... What should happen to... That's another question. Question two. The Republicans that want to uh, turn overturn the election, is that treason or is that blasphemy? Is that just... What is that? I'd like to know. Write your answers below. I've given you lots of homework. Bye.